disconnected. Now let's see what we can build with this building block. Okay, so what I'm going to build is, is a, a very basic combinational circuit, and this is called uh, a NOT gate. Okay, so you've all studied NOT gates at least once in your life. I know that because I know your, uh, your syllabus. Uh, how does the NOT gate work? How many inputs does the NOT gate have? One. How many outputs does it have? Also one, indeed. And the output, so you see here, the, the, the output Q uh, is the uh, opposite of A. So if A was logic one, then Q would be logic zero. And if A was logic zero, then Q should be logic one. And uh, we see that we connected it to a power supply because, again, this is an active device. We need power supply. Now, uh, I'm going to explain how this works in, in detail. Um, so first of all, this is uh, this is the international symbol for a transistor. Um, who here is seeing this for the first time? Seeing a transistor for the first time. What an exciting time for you. Okay, how exciting, right. Um, Yeah, so no, so you see, first of all, capacitor has only two uh, terminals, this one has three, and and uh, there one of them is not the system. So you see, we actually have uh, two kinds of transistors here. Uh, this one is uh, regular logic. And you see, uh, does have this belly button, this pipic. And this one is, uh, is an, an inverse logic. It's, um, yeah, okay. So um, this one works like I told you. If, if there's a logic one, then the source and the drain are connected. And if there's logic zero, it's likely it's connected. And this one does the opposite. So if there's a logic zero, they are connected. And if there's a logic one, they are disconnected. And now I want to teach you about <clears throat> a logic design a methodology called complementary logic. And complementary Magneto-optic silicon is CMOS, and you, you might have heard the word CMOS several times because most of the uh, devices you're using, I think, all of the logic you're probably using in your phone and your computer and so on, is using CMOS logic. So I'm going to tell you how CMOS works right now. And CMOS, the C in CMOS is complementary. The idea in CMOS is that every output has two competing, like angels sitting on its shoulder. One of them is called the pull-up network, and the other one is called the pull-down network. The pull-up network wants to make this output logical one, and the pull-down wants to make it logical zero. And in each situation, we want one of the networks to win, right? If the pull-up network wins, then the output is going to be one. If the pull-down network wins, the output is going to be zero. What happens if none of them, either of them, none of them are uh, win? What will be the output? Tap. So it's undefined. We don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be probably uh, we will be. It will. We we won't be happy that it happens. What happens if we activate both of them? What will happen? Boom. Yeah. If both of them are active at the same time, you will have a fire because you will. Yeah. You will have a short circuit between the, the BDD and and the ground. Yeah. Fire. Exactly. Um, you know that there are emojis in this chat and you're not using them. I feel like you, maybe I should contribute um, something at least. All right, so let's talk about uh, how this, uh, let's look about, let's look at this, uh, at this very basic uh, CMOS circuit, uh, which does uh, logic not. So uh, if the input is logical one, what would we like the output to be? Zero, right? This is a not gate we want. If the input is one, we want the output to be zero. So let's see what happens. If the input is one, then this logical one goes to the gate of this transistor. And because this is a regular transistor, uh, it becomes a short circuit. 
So now this logical zero comes out of the output, which is good, okay? Logical zero comes out of the output, which is good. But we need to check to see what's going on in the pull-up network. So the pull-up network, uh, this logical one travels here, and then it meets this belly button, and now the circuit is going to stay open. So it's going to be an open circuit, so the logical one cannot travel into uh, the output. So the zero goes to Q. So if I put one here, I get zero here. Now, uh, should I do it again and see what happens if I put logical zero? Does anybody want me to repeat it with logical zero? Okay, let's do it again with logical zero. Uh, so if I have a logical zero here, then uh, the zero goes here, and this is a regular transistor, so a zero makes it into an open circuit. So the logical zero does not go into the output because this is open. But if I have a logical zero and it hits this uh, pulpit, this belly button, uh, this transistor, when it gets a logical zero, it becomes a short circuit. And then the logical one, which is traveling here, goes out of the uh, output. So I turn the zero into one and the one into zero. How many transistors did I use? Right, I use two transistors together. And in complementary logic, you usually use an, uh, an, an even number of transistors. Because you have the pull-up network and the pull-down, then they're quite similar. Oh, thank you, Idol, for the emoji. Hmm. Um, uh, well, let's do a little more. Uh, uh, OK, uh, a question for you. When does this circuit Oh, I'm saying the one goes into destination instead of the source. You mean this logical one, it goes into Q. This is the source and this is the gate. This is the source and this is the drain. This is the source and this is the drain. This, this circle is a transistor. What's going on outside is, this is a transistor here. This is a transistor. It has a source, a drain, and a gate. The one, there is a source and a gate in a drain. Yeah, the source and the drain, they become a short circuit. The gate, the, the current from the gate doesn't go out, but the source and the drain become a short circuit. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if it goes from left to right, to right to left. And basically, electrons are also, they're negative, so they charge. Ne electrons go from the minus to the plus. It's all, you know, it's all a metaphor anyway, but, but it's a short circuit, so a short circuit. You might think you might be thinking of a diode, and the diode current goes in one direction, not in the other. But this is not a diode situation. This is a transistor. Okay, fine. So um, when does this device consume power? This this not. Here. So I told you that a device consumes power when current goes from the so from the power supply to the ground. And if you look at this device, you see that uh, actually there is no situation where current is going from the logical one to the logical zero. You see, if because every time the pull down network is, is active, the pull up network is, is open. So what does this mean? That the device doesn't consume any power? This is, this is actually very nice if that would be the case. So when does the device consume power? So yeah, so so the device can be consuming heat, right? It could be an, it could be a non-ideal device. It could be some leakage current and so on. But what happens is that when the device is transitioning between open and closed, when this channel is closing and this one is opening, uh, there is a, what is called a glitch, like in Yiddish when you slide. Uh, this is almost open. This is almost closed. And in this short period, some power can sneak through from the source to the drain. And there is also, is this Dimitri? Ah, okay, thank you, Dimitri. Uh, and uh, there's also some kind of discharge current, so I'll talk about this in, in, 
in two slides, I promise. But first of all, I want to show you a little uh, more complicated logic element. I want to build this combination of circuit. I'm going to build, ah, so when it's, it's empowered, it's solved. I'm going to build an AND gate. Okay, uh, first of all, I built a NOT gate, and I think you all know how an AND gate works because uh, you went to uh, a course. So what uh, inputs, how many inputs does an AND gate have? Two, indeed, and it has one output, um, A, B, and Q. So Q is going to be A and B. And when is the uh, gate equal to one? When both A and B are equal to one. Otherwise, it's zero. So now we need to build uh, a pull-up network and a pull-down network. We want to make uh, we want to make uh, this output Q um, equal to one when both of the inputs are one, and equal to zero when either of the inputs is zero. So now I am going to uh, first of all I'm going to build the uh, I'm going to build the pull-up network. So the pull-up network wants the device to be equal wants the output to be equal to one, right? And this happens only when both A and B are equal to one. So see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one transistor. This is one transistor. And here is another transistor. Right. And I'm going to connect A to the gate of this one and B to the gate of this one. Okay, and I'm going to connect uh, logical one here. Now, when the A is equal to one, then there will be logical one here. Now, what do I do to this? What do I do to B? How, how do I connect these two transistors? Yeah, like somebody connect these two transistors for me. Can anybody connect them together? I gave you the whiteboard. Just take a pen and connect. Them. What? No. Ah, Atsilu. What? No. What? Ah, stop. Stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. No. No. Thank you for your creativity. Uh, uh, I am going to take them and connect them in series, like this. And I'm going to take the output of B, and I'm going to send it to the output. This is the pull-up network. Why is this a pull-up network? Look, when A and B are equal to 1, then the logical 1 can travel from the VDD to Q. If either A or B are equal to 0, then there is going to be an open circuit here, and the, the, the logical one will not be able to travel to the output. This is the pull-up network. Good? Okay. Uh, who here understood the pull-up network? I just want to get a logical one out when both A and B are equal to 1. Okay, so I have half of you are... are um, so some of you understood, some of you are. What about zero? Oh, no, we need to build the pull-down network. No, the pull-down network, I will be using uh, a different color. And now I'm going to take another pair of transistors. And yeah. And these are going to be uh, N types. Yep. They're going to have these belly buttons because I'm going I want to see, I want to take a logical zero and make it do some activity. Yeah, A and B, no. Yeah, A and B are the gate and they're the source in the dream. Okay. So I'm going to connect zero. I'm going to connect A to here. I'm going to make a little jump. Jump. A is going to go to here. And B is going to go to here. And now, what happens now? 
If there is a logical zero, then there is a short circuit. So I can connect this here. And now I want the zero to come out of the output. So I do this. But what do I do with A? Do I connect it in series? Or do I do something else? So remember, to have a logical one, I need both of them to be one. But a logical zero works if either of them are zero. So I'm going to connect this one in parallel. And I'm going to do it like this. And I'm going to jump. And this is a disgusting. Oh, this looks terrible. Oh, no. So yeah, I could have drawn it better, I guess. But what you see here is uh, the pull down network. If A is equal to zero, immediately the pull down network gets a zero out of the output. If one is equal to zero, immediately the pull down network turns on. If both of them are equal to one, only then the pull up network gets to operate. And this is how we build. This is how I build an AND gate. Now, how many transistors do I have here? Four, right? I have four transistors. And again, I have a pull up network and a pull down network. And again, uh, when the device is static, it doesn't consume any power, almost, which is really nice for me uh, because I want to save a lot of battery, right? And now I can keep my device running for a lot of time. But it's also very useful for me as an attacker. Why is it useful for me as an attacker? What can you, what, what, why, why is it useful, this, this fact, why is it useful for me as an attacker? Did anybody suggest? Right, so uh, if the device is consuming a little power when it's static and a lot of power when it's changing, then I can look at the power consumption and see if something is switching and that will tell me something about the device. I, could, I will be able to do some kind of cybering, and this is what I do. So these are uh, uh, combinational elements. I can build, you know, um, once you can build an OR or a NAND gate, you can build all of the other device, uh, uh, all of the other elements. There's like a proof. But you can think, how can I build an AND with three or four or five? How can I build an XOR? How can I build a NAND? Uh, and so on. It's just uh, variations on this, on this theme. 